social media and messaging apps, it does hold such power over us. Even I find myself far too often looking at my plain white screen. Instagram, Instagram again. I sighed, sipped my coffee, black, without any extras, a poor bit of black liquid. My list of blocked people was rather small, has always been, but I stared at your name. I hate to admit that I miss you, but I do. You've always been a good kid. I was just always the one who worried too much. Wouldn't be much different now. I'm just like that. If you start your career, you might end up caring too much. I was sitting on this chair of one of those high fashion coffee shops. Star cups or something. Overpriced coffee, decent desserts, my least favorite place, but it was the only rather empty place around here. I finished the cup and was about to bring it back to the counter. Isn't it a little cold to say that? Someone stood in my way. I didn't look up. It would be a waste of time. Maybe, I said and tried to shove him away gently. Made it to the counter, handed back my cup and went for the exit. I tried to ignore the waiting figure, but it was hard as they stood in my way again. <sighs> what do you want? I looked up, saw the face. It was him, the name I hovered above early on my account. He chuckled. I just didn't expect to hear. It's been a while. It has been. True. Can you let me go now? He shrugged his shoulders. Sure I can. Where you go? But you could also use this moment and ask me your questions you seem to be holding back for a long while. I sighed. Was I really giving in now? Fine. It is only one though. He nodded. Cool. Let me get us a drink at least. And where was I? Ran straight into his trap. Awesome! You do have a knack for getting yourself in trouble, don't you? We sat down. I was on edge. Share a bit to the left, ready to simply jump up and leave. He paid our drinks and returned. A little smile. Cute, but not catching me enough. I hoped, at least. So, how have you been? He asked me, trying to break the ice. So far, so good. I was just enjoying my coffee earlier. He chuckled. Oh yeah, I was doing that. Probably scrolling through Instagram. Tell me, what was on your mind? Why? I tried to stay calm, asking myself why I was so defensive. Why do you still care? You ghosted me, or something like that, and now you come back like nothing has happened. Like I hadn't brought you to collect myself. Like I had never minded you messing with my mind, but I did mind. I was hurt. I told you before, I don't want to be an option. I know I'm not your first choice sort of friend, or former friend, but don't make me feel like a freaking option. His eyes went wide. I apologize for ever making you feel like that, but have you ever thought of me? Like how I must have felt? You blocked me. I don't blame you. But you came off quite strong. I was afraid to suffocate under you being always worried about me. I told you I can manage. Sleeping on a park bench was a joke. We both were worked up. We both were huffing for air. And we both cried. I'm sorry. He said it at the same time. And cried a bit more. I... Guess we were just not good for each other. I was horrible. Overcaring, I'm sorry for being too much. All of my insecurities. He nodded. And I'm sorry for not taking proper care of you. Should have been paying attention. It shouldn't have made you feel so insecure in the first place. Good day everyone, it's your host Scala on the mic. Welcome to Deep Thinkers Corner, a series where you and I talk about all possible stuff you and I might think of as interesting. Of course combined with nerdy stuff like manga, anime, music and even poetry. So today's entrance was a short story written by me. It is a fictional story but yeah, I usually don't <laughs> show off my work. I, I don't do that. I mean, I post it on Instagram, but I don't really say anything about it because I'm just like, yeah, it's out in the void. <laughs> Do whatever you want with that. Just give me credits. 
<laughs> if you actually do something with it. But I think I was hinting on it already. They come in many forms, and some of them are more a bit less evil, but nonetheless toxic. Yes, I'm talking about all those toxic relationships we all went through, maybe even without realizing that they were indeed not good for us. Today, I want to point out those things and will share a bit of my personal experience, but I won't address any names and I try to be as vague as possible of the situation, just putting it into more or less a frame. <sighs> so, first of all, I don't think that such toxic relationships are only formed between toxic people and others. I truly think even you as a normal person can end up creating or just get into a toxic relationship. Um, maybe key points are lack of communication, which is actually happening more than I thought from what I heard, but yeah, exploiting people and their emotions and so on. The list is long. So this can happen to anybody, anytime, and it is simply because we are humans and just we are just not perfect perfection doesn't exist i really don't think that there is something or is someone which or who is perfect there's nothing perfect in this world everything has its flaws and that is beautiful okay of course there are people who enjoy others misery but and they are just like more likely to create an environment for that. But I'm not really going to speak about that simply because I don't remember ever having to face such people. So now I've been rambling quite a lot of people and toxic environments. But what is actually a toxic relationship? <laughs> so I was making a poll um, on Instagram the other day and asked you guys who what do you think is a toxic relationship? And I'm quoting here someone. I'm thank thank you for being this wow detailed. Um, so wait, let me quote. A toxic relationship is one in which someone guilt trips the other without any reasons. For example, making you feel bad because you just don't have time in, at this moment. Twisting of words, forbidding other friendships, saying or better said, accusing someone on things you never said or thought. Like when this person says, you all think I'm stupid anyways, or similar. Only to notify a right to call someone when you're lonely slash bored, had a fight with someone else, and more. Well, I'd agree on a lot of this to be fair. And I won't lie, maybe I experience one or two things listed here. But I, like, I just realized that, okay, I, I was not really thinking about it, but when I was like creating, thinking about this topic, but right now reading this makes me think, yeah, there might have been one or two things actually. <laughs> so again, some of us might have experienced this probably in one or another way. Yeah, before I go over to the, what I found on Very Well Mine, um, I also want to declare again, relationships, I connotate them in general with any kind of bonding between people. It can be just between acquaintance, friends, family, your partner be it like business partner or a relation like a romantic relationship I'm not yeah it can be any kind of relationship but let's go back to what I found on a page called very well mind links in description as always um, it it yet yeah, it's very something I can agree on as a definition 
sums up pretty well what has been stated before. Quote, a toxic relationship is one that makes you feel unsupported, misunderstood, demeaned or attacked. On a basic level, any relationship that makes you feel worse rather than better can become toxic over time. Toxic relationships can can exist in just about any context, from the playground to the boardroom to the bedroom. You may even deal with toxic relationships among your family members. A relationship is toxic when your well-being is threatened in some way, emotionally, psychologically, and even physically. End of quote. Um, the page was going on and says like something that toxic relationships is only going out from toxic people. However, I don't feel like that. Again, I said it doesn't have to be just toxic people. It can also just be because you're just unaware of, of a better solution in this moment or just you don't know how to deal with it better at, at this very moment <sighs> and yeah let's go over to a rather hard question and I want everyone to be very honest with yourself you don't have to answer me do it for yourself have you and I ever created toxicity in a relationship maybe even without notice well I'd be lying if I said no because I'm sure that I did but without further notice that I just didn't know that I might have caused that to that time now thinking back to that I might have really done that just because I was I was a different person to that time someone I, I, I I'm liking a lot seems to be a, like, like who seems to be a really good person um, he's a youtuber so I can't really speak too much about him <laughs> said that a person just changes over the time span of three to five years so and I agree on that three years ago I was a different person or maybe even better said five years ago but three years ago already because three years ago there was I was just barely starting to get to know myself better and to work on myself I was in a different place mentally and what I'm going to tell you about my personal story it starts actually three years ago or um, yeah I guess three years now it's, it was at least to the time when I was still in um, high school and I was preparing myself to actually graduate yeah A levels and so, stuff so I was pretty stressed this is not an excuse okay but I was like yeah I was just starting my journey on becoming a better person. I, I'm not a good person. I'm better than what I used to be in the past, at least. This is what I at least think. I'm on a good basis by now. I was just not good to myself back in the past. Anyways, let's go over to the story. There, there was a guy I once knew, well, more or less. And I think we both just didn't do well for each other. As I said, I was not still in high school. My sister was really young and I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, my sister is much younger than me, but I, I worry less about her by now. To that time, I was so much of a person who just bores a lot of people, especially because I was looking after a more people who were just younger than me and I'm yeah I mean I from personal experience I mean I did not do really that stupid stuff what some other teens have might have done in that 
time but i know at least what teenagers can do and i'm sometimes like i mean yeah you should have some experience but don't do things which just don't benefit you okay anyways back to the topic so i was someone who yeah was just so used to worry a lot of people and i might have pushed him a bit too much in that time because I mean, he he knew how to manage himself. At least I believe that by now. Like, I don't know. (laughs) I'm not going too deep into details, but it's just like, yeah, I felt a little bit triggered. And being someone who worries a lot, it was just not going too well, as you can see. He, on the other hand, Even though at first he gave me a lot of attention, it got less over the time we got to know each other. And wherefore I felt like an option. It might have not even been his fault because someone having a busy schedule. Yeah, I mean, you have to set your priorities and I was just not one. Now I can understand that. I mean, I have people I don't talk to every day either. But to that time, I did. I just did not know better. To that time, I just felt like an option. I mean, I know that I was probably not his best friend. And maybe closer to an acquaintance than actually a friend, even though he labeled me as a friend. Just saying. <sighs> but it Loki just fell to me. Like, I can't speak for him. I'm sorry, I... It is just my situation, like my side of the story, if he ever thinks about opening up to it. Um, yeah. Do what you want to do, dude. I'm not even mad if you point me out as a black sheep. Because honestly, I might have actually been. I don't know. <laughs> I was different to that time, yeah. By now, I'm just like, yeah, do whatever you want. I just made myself clear by now that I don't want to be an option. If someone makes me feel like an option, I don't even consider them as my friends, maybe just an acquaintance or less. It's just, yeah. Where is the difference now? I make my, I have my boundaries. I'm making more healthy (laughs) <laughs> like not not more healthy but healthier boundaries for myself um <clears throat> anyways uh it is just again my side of the story and people i was to a time in the bu- in a bubble and i was just at the beginning of tw- my 20s i just came out of my teens so and yeah you still end up in a bubble you and at any time in your life you might be like yeah damn i'm i'm ending up here in a bubble <laughs> and i mean i can't be even mad at myself for that because it's just like yeah <laughs> it do be like that sometimes and i feel like he's actually not a bad person i still don't think so it it, it yeah again I mean he might have at least to that time it felt to me like he was part time ghosting me it might have even been the truth it might be even true but I don't I don't mind I don't care anymore I made my peace with that but in general I think we were both fault at it's simply not working out either we haven't met at the right time Or it was actually the right time, but we just both had to use this as a lesson. And yeah. I mean, honestly, some lessons in life can be tougher than I really want them to be, but... Well, that was the story. (laughs) What I'm really sorry about is just... And this is, hey, this is to you, anonymous person who I might have addressed here. Uh, If you're listening, at least. (laughs) I'm 
I am just sorry. Like I truly am. Um, for my past younger self, um, what I just wished is that we could have simply fixed this in a better way. Like. Having a better communication type of way to sort this thing out, but yeah, I mean, maybe it's actually good we walked away, but we parted ways because yeah, I don't know. Could have been worse. It could have been worse. I I feel like imaginary wise, things could have go- gone even more wrong or extreme. This was just. I feel like this is just still one of the rather less intense ways a toxic relationship can go. I mean. We stopped that rather soon or earlier. Hey, I mean, I, I appreciate the time we had. I truly do. You were a great life lesson. And a way for me to see my faults a little clearer, making me work harder on myself. Just not to be better for, my, for myself, but also for others. So, hey, and this is to every ghost of my past. I truly hope that you guys are happy now, that that you just found your happiness, your way to feel content, made peace with your past even. (coughs) Oof, wow, okay, this got a bit emotional. Maybe we should continue on how to make the situation you're in better. I'm not a professional and I don't th- I don't think you should necessarily follow my advice. But this is what I've done in the past or, or kind of still do. And one of this is to take myself out of this environment. And I don't just mean like, yo, like I don't mean to abruptly disconnect from those people. It's just like, be like saying even to them, hey, maybe let's, let me take a break. I need to sort my thoughts. And if, if you still feel like no matter what, like if you're, thinking just thinking not actually doing thinking any kind of resolution you come with like solution for this situation is not benefiting you despite maybe actually leaving then take yourself from this toxic relationship and just leave explain yourself people will be mad at this no matter what you say like i mean i would yeah just say hey like let's phrase it a little bit kindly because at least you've let them go in a nicer way but if you go if you leave let them know (laughs) and in worst case if they still try to come at your throat block them and this is just no matter if you're at fault or not. It is just for yourself to gain some clarity. And I try to work through it actually. The points I noted noticed. Like, does it still make sense to remain in this relationship? If no, end the relationship, like as I said. Again, explain your points. Um you will always, no matter who actually, like if you are the other person, 
unless you realize that before. They will try, at least if you're the person who cuts the ties, they will try to make you feel bad. I don't know what they try to get from that. I really don't. Maybe to, so that you feel like, like being the bad guy, but you have to know for yourself if this is making sense or not. Yeah, I personally think you at this very mo moment know best what is good for you. If distance is not something which destroys you right now, but is really needed, take it, claim it, sort your thoughts and emotions out. Write it down, anything, but no alcohol or excessive partying, no matter if this global situation is going on or not. I feel like this is rather something what is like self-sabotaging you in figuring yourself out. But this is just my opinion. Again, you don't have to follow <laughs> what I'm saying here, but I just advise you to not try to sabotage yourself, but just to take this time and get to know yourself a little bit better. If there is something I might have done wrong in this past relationship or whatever, I want to fix it. I, I'm this type of person, like, I am still working on communicating better, which this is a long process because I'm just not the most... I'm still not at the point where I say, yeah, I, I'm someone who has an easier time to talk about themselves. I'm still working on that. But again, other things like try not to, to worry too much about someone. Um, try to reduce this. Like, start with something which, which is a bit easier for you and then continue to the harder points. Again, you don't have to be a perfect version of yourself. Perfection is fiction, it's not existing. But try just to be a better version of yourself. Always try to be better. Not to be the best or perfect, just try to be better. Because, yeah, I see myself as a constant work in progress. Okay, so much to that. Um, well, on very well mind are uh, also traits of toxic people stated. And, and as I said before, I just want to be very honest with you. I do not agree with this list. Everything has a scale, and therefore I wouldn't like to say, yeah, this emotion character trait is toxic or such, because to me, it depends on the degree on that. First one is insecurity like feeling insecure. Again, I'm pretty sure every one of us is insecure to some point about something. For example, I'm insecure about myself a lot of times because I'm often asking myself what the heck I'm doing. I know people who feel the same, but I wouldn't say they are toxic, so no. On the other side, it says secure is not toxic, which I also feel like is like, are you rigrolling me here? Because, like, I can't imagine to feel this overall security. Because it feels like utopian, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's, it, or jealousy. I... Uh, being a tiny bit jealous is okay. Being overall jealous is not okay. Again, this is like scales. I mean, also, where is something called uh, toxic positivity? They say being positive is not toxic. I am just like, no, <laughs> being positive can be toxic because, yeah, I, I don't know. Let me tell you guys, try to find a good balance of all the traits for yourself. And balance doesn't mean, yeah, you have to be in the middle. It just has to be. For you, that you just feel like, yeah, this is okay for you. This is how a way for you to not actually end up sab sabotaging yourself or any relationship in the future. Um, anyways, before I end this episode, I want to suggest a manga I started reading a bit ago. It's called uh, Hitotsubana. As far as I've read, which is like vol volume 3, I haven't read the rest yet. It is a manga series about someone 
like someone who was secretly in love with his upper classman and somehow his feelings got twisted and turned into something darker. So if you want to read it, I won't spoil you too much. It is a little dark, but I, it's highly fasc- fascinating to me. And there are also things get a little bit more extreme. Okay, so um, on the next scale of extreme, I have Scum's Wish. Lots of you might have already read it before. I read it. It's the end? I'm not, I don't want to spoil. <laughs> I wanted to say the ending, but no. No. But it's really close to what I feel like is real. More than I want it to be real sometimes, but yeah, it is. Wow. And <laughs> of course, they listed killing stalking. Hear me out. I don't know. When it first came out, some people were like, oh yeah, this is like uh, boys love. But no, it's not. It is it is not even labeled as boys love. It is not. It is a story of two people being... Oh, my damn. It's really only for major audience. Or people and people... Who are not easily triggered because there is violence, there is toxicity. I love real toxicity. I just tell you. Manipulation. It is really rough until so far I have read. I still like it because the psychology behind it is just so fascinating. I, I am I'm not a psychology major or minor, but what I see so far and what I sometimes get explained from my uh, great friend here living with me is highly fascinating. Links to synopsis and of all like of all stories are in the description. Also recently I heard it again but there's like a song I think it's called Pretty Venom by All Time Low and when I think about the lyrics I like I feel like this shows perfectly the stages of like when you realize how a relationship just messes you up personally. Like, what was the lyrics again? <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm not a great singer, but I, I'm the type of person when it comes to songs, I try to sing them when I crow them. So I think it was like, but, um, I think I'm going through denial. It's been a while, but it's clear when it hits me. I think I might have gone insane. I rot my brain, getting high on our history. Yeah, I think that was it. Anyways, now to sum up this episode: toxic relationships can come in. Man- mo- blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Toxic relationships can come in many forms, and it is not necessarily created by toxic people, but also between the normal citizen. There is no real way to say that we haven't encountered or created such environment, and that every trait can trigger toxicity, be it usually yeah, seen as a good or bad trait. Because there is nothing as good or bad, it's just the word is not just black and white, it's grey. We just have to figure out how to deal with it in a better, balanced way between us as a person and the relationships we are involved in. So again, thank you for listening. Shout out to everyone participating in these both Instagram polls and um, yeah, maybe give a yeah give a listen to the song or just read one of the free mangas I've yeah so I guess it here don't forget um, also to check out my socials yeah thank you for listening and I see you next or I hear from you in the next episode bye bye